Hi, I'm Ken with Orion Telescopes and Binoculars, and this is the Orion Starseeker 4 80mm refracting telescope. It is uh, a little bit newer telescope on this mount. We haven't had a long focus refractor before, uh, but it works quite nicely on this mount. It, the, the arm is swept back enough that even at zenith, you're not going to run into the mount. So it, it goes from horizon to zenith without any problems hitting the mount. It's on the Starseeker 4 mount, which is our latest incarnation with the, the nicest features. It has steel legs, so nice and solid, still very lightweight, so easy to move around, and uh, features the full go-to system of the Starseeker 4. So you punch in what you want to see into the hand controller, it will go find the object, it will center it, and then it will continue to follow it along uh, the, as the Earth rotates underneath us. Uh, an 80 millimeter refractor like this is great for moon and planets. It's got a nice long focal length, so inherently there's a lot of power. So great contrast on the rings of Saturn, the cloud bands on Jupiter, uh, moons around Jupiter. It's 80 millimeters, so the brightest of the deep sky objects will show up. So if you wanted to point this at the Orion Nebula, you'd see some nice detail. Uh, there's, there's a bunch of the Meze objects uh, that are within the range of an 80 millimeter refractor, as long as you can get a little bit away from the, the uh, city lights. The uh, Starseeker 4 mount, the go-to system, has a nice new feature to it. Uh, it's, it features closed uh, loop feedback. It's got a dual encoder system on it. What that means is most go-to systems, once you do the two-star alignment, if you were to then move the scope manually without using the hand controller, it would lose its position. It wouldn't know where it is and you'd have to redo the alignment. Well, with the encoders inside, this doesn't happen. So let's say I was looking at Jupiter right there with a the hand controller. And then I just wanted to quickly move over to something off over here. I can move it manually, look at that object, and then if I go back to the hand controller and tell it I want to see Jupiter again, it will know exactly where Jupiter was. It hasn't gotten lost, and it will go right back to uh, the position in the sky that Jupiter's at. There's a nice advantage there. Um, the, the mount takes eight AA batteries, and they fit into the, um, into the base unit. It's not a separate little pouch anymore, so that's a nice feature. But with a full go-to system, this drains some, some power. It takes some uh, juice away from the batteries as you're slewing from object to object to object all night long. Well, let's say you wanted to save some of that power. So let's say you're going to look at some object over here, like the moon is on the opposite side of the sky. Well, instead of pressing the moon here and having it slew all the way over to it, I can just manually grab the telescope, move it over to about where the moon is, and then use the hand controller to enter the moon and it'll just do that last little bit with a go-to system. So uh, it hasn't gotten lost, it's found everything and you're saving the battery power. So a very nice feature. Um, the scope itself comes with two eyepieces, a 23 millimeter and a 10 millimeter wide angle design. Also you get the easy finder, the, the finder scope on the side, that helps you to do the initial two-star alignment. Um, after that you really don't need much of a finder because the telescope, the mount itself, can find everything by itself. Uh, so overall, a very nice uh, telescope for the family, uh, easy to use, moon planets, some brighter deep sky objects. The Orion Starseeker 4 80mm refractor. Thank you very much. Clear skies.